Hi, this is Mrs. Lemoyne, and today we're doing illustrative math, grade five, unit two, lesson 10, fractional side lengths less than one. So let's get started. Fractional side lengths less than one. Let's find the area of rectangles with a fractional side length. So what is the area? This is our warm up. We're going to estimate. What is the area of the shaded region? Record an estimate that's too low, about right, and too high. So I'm going to first ask myself, is more than half or less than half of the rectangle shaded? So I notice that I have seven up here. Yeah, seven here. Get a different color here. And this whole thing is a one. So I'm asking myself, is this half? I think it's more than half. So I think half would be about right here, if I could draw a straight line. Half would be about right there. So I think that this would probably be one, two, three fourths. So if I were estimating, I would say that it's seven, right? Three fourths, seven times three fourths. So that's about 21 fourths. So how many fours? Are in 21. Well, I know that 4 times 4 is 16 and 4 times 5 is 20. So I'm going to say that about right would be 5. Maybe 5 and a quarter, 5 and a fourth. Too high would be 10 because there's only 7, right? And too low would be about 1. What are your best estimates for this one? There's lots of different ways you could have thought about it, right? Lots of bit different ways you could have thought about it. All right, let's move on to the first activity. Okay, here's the same picture. And they're telling us that if the height of the shaded region was 5, 6, so that means instead of a one right here, from he, the shaded region from here to here is five, six, okay? What expression could you write to represent the area of the shaded region? Well, just like I did in the warm-up, I would write seven, five, six, right? There are seven of them. This would be five, six, five, six, and so on, all the way to the end. So I could say seven times five, six. Then I know that I could write seven over one, and then seven times five is 35 over six. That's how I would write it if I had to write an expression to represent that. All right, let's move on to the activity. I think that was just the launch. So we're gonna erase that, go on to our activity. This should be in your book. Write a multiplication expression to represent the area of each shaded region, then find the area. Okay, so I know that this one's going to be 4 times 2 thirds, 4 2 thirds. Again, I could write that as 2 thirds times 4, or I could write 2 thirds times 4. And remember that if we put 4 over 1, we just multiply across, so we would get eight thirds. Another way to look at it, remember yesterday we were moving things, right? So I could move this piece here and that makes a one and move this piece here, shade that in, shade this in, and that makes another one. And then I would have two thirds left, right? So I think that eight thirds is the same as two and two thirds. Okay, so these would be my answers. All right, and it's asking for a multiplication expression, so this is what they want. So in number two, again, I can write a multiplication expression. I can do it either way I want. I could do three-fourths four times. And I would get 12 over four. And remember that this fraction bar is the same as a division, right? So 12 divided by 4 should equal 3. Oh, and I'm not labeling these, am I? So this should be square units. So this would be a good answer, or this. And again, I have to write square 
units. There we go. And again, I could use the same method. I could move this top piece here. That goes away. And here's my one. Yes. And then I could move, let's see, let's move this piece here and this piece here. <laughs> That's going to get confusing, isn't it? So let's not do that. Let's move a different piece. So let's think of that differently. So let's say I move this piece all the way over here, and that's going to make a one. And then I can move this piece here. So there's my three. One, two, three. I took these three pieces and moved them to make ones. One, two, three. So that's a different way of looking at it. My last one, of course, they want a multiplication expression. So I'm going to write four. There's my four times three-fifths. So I'm going to put a four over one, multiply across, four times three is twelve, and they're all divided into fifths, twelve-fifths. Again, we can write that as square units. I can leave it like that, or I can divide them up. So again, I can take these three and divide them, well, it needs two this time, so that doesn't work. Let's see how we're going to do that. I'm going to take these two, move them here, and that makes a one. So these go away, and these are shaded in now. I have this one I can move here, right? But I need another one, so I'm going to have to move this one here. So this goes away, and this goes away, and this makes a full one. So here's two. So there's my two holes, and then I'm left with this, which is one, two, out of one, two, three, four, five. Two and two fifths square units. So this one gets a little complicated when you're moving things around. But if I did the division, so I would say five goes into 12, two times, two times five is 10, and I have two left over. Look, it works out. So two whole ones with two left over. Perfect. All right, let's move on to the next activity. How are the second and third shaded regions the same, and how are they different? Well, we're going to have to go back to look at that, aren't we? So how are the second and third ones, so number two and three, the same, and how are they different? Well, they're the same because they're all four units long. That's how they're the same. Um, there are 12 pieces in each, one, two, three, four, right? Four times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 shaded pieces each, okay? The 12 in the second example are one-fourth of a square unit, so this is one-fourth and this is one-fifth. So that's how they're different. All right, let's see what else they want us to ask us. How does this expression relate to the second and third regions? Well, in both of them, the number of shaded pieces is four times three. In both of them, four times three. Why are the areas of these two shaded regions different? The small pieces are not the same, right? They are one-fourth of a unit square and in one, and in the other, they're one-fifth of a unit square. All right. The expressions for areas show that there are 12 shaded pieces in both, but they are different sizes. So in one, in number two, it was one-fourth, and in number three, it was one-fifth. All right. Let's move on to activity two. Write a multiplication expression to express the, to represent the area of the shaded region. What is the area? Okay, so let's look at that, a multiplication. So I can see that we have one, two, three, so all together, this is a three. So I could use a three times. And then what is this? Two out of one, two, three. 
two thirds, right? Two times two thirds. So I have two thirds once, twice, three times. So I'm going to multiply it times three and get six thirds, which I know is going to be the same as two square units. And I know that because I can move them, right? I can move this piece here and make a one. And then I can move this piece here, and then these two go away because I moved them, right? So that's a two. Okay. So two square units for that one. Here are two diagrams. Consider each expression and decide whether it represents the shaded region in one of the diagrams. Be prepared to share your, your thinking. All right. So when I look at diagram X, this is diagram X, I see that I have three, and when I look at Y, I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then I notice in diagram X, I have one, two, three, four out of five shaded, and on this side, I have one, two, three out of four shaded. So now that I have that all marked out, um, let's see which diagram represents each one. So, three-fourths times five. Here's my three-fourths times five. So I think this is going to be diagram X. I'm sorry, Y. Y. Okay. Three times three-fifths. Three times three-fifths. I don't see that anywhere. You see that in this one? I see three times four fifths. And I see five times three fifths. I mean, three fourths. So I think that this one doesn't have, this one's going to be neither. It doesn't go to X or Y. Three times four times one fifth. Three times four times one fifth. So let's see, this would be one, two, three, four, five. This piece here is one fifth. I have three of them, one, two, three, four times, right? One, two, three, four. So I think this one's going to be with diagram X. I think that one is with diagram X. You see that? One fifth, four times, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, times three. So three times four times one fifth. So I think that's diagram X. Then we have four times three-fourths. So here's my three-fourths, but that's multiplied by five, so I think this is a neither. And then I have three times three times one-fourth. Three times three times one-fourth. So again, I only I have five here. This is a fourth three times, but it's times five. So I think this is a neither as well neither. Okay. So for each diagram, what is the area? Well, let's do this one. Three times four fifths would be three fourths. Well, I'm doing this one. I'm doing what? Times five over one would be 15 fourths square units. And that's for Y. For X, I have three times four fifths, put that over one, and I get 12 fifths square units. If I wanted to put those into whole numbers, I could do the division or I could move things, right? So I could move this here, this here, and this one over here, and that means I have one whole. This one goes away because I moved it, two, three holes. And then I'm left with this, right? So this would be three and three fourths. So that's the same as 15 over four. With this one, again, I'm gonna move here. I can move this one here, and that gives me a hole here and a hole here, but then I'm left with these, right? So that means I'm gonna have two and two out of five. And I can prove that with division. 5 goes into 12 two times. 2 times 5 is 10 with a leftover of 2. Over here, 4 goes into 15 three times. 3 times 4 is 12. 
with a leftover of 3. So 3 and 3 fourths is the same as 15 over 4. And 2 and 2 fifths is the same as 12 over 5. Whew, that's a lot of thinking there. All right, let's talk about all of that. So how did you determine the side length for the shaded region in the diagram? So again, I counted the top. I counted the top and that was three. One, two, three. And then I counted one, two, three, four out of one, two, three, four, five. Four was shaded out of five. So that's how I determined the side lengths. Three times four times one fifth. How does this expression show the shaded region in diagram X? This was the one that was kind of hard, right? So again, I have my three at the top, one, two, three. And I have four pieces in each one. So this is the same as saying four times, and then each one of these pieces is one fifth, right? So I could say that, right? Three times four times each one of those fourths, four pieces is one fifth, okay? All right. Today we found the area of a rectangle with a whole number side and a fractional length side. Whole number was three and the fractional length was two thirds. What are some different expressions that represented the shaded region? Pick one of the expressions and explain to your partner how it represents the shaded region. So you could do that in your class. For me, this would be, again, three whole pieces and two shaded out of three on this side. So I would do three times two thirds over one equals six thirds. Again, I could use the moving pieces, move this here, move this here. Then I would have one whole because I would shade that in and two holes. So six over three is the same as six divided by three or two square units. All right, on to our cool down. Write a multiplication expression to represent the area of the shaded region. So my multiplication expression would be, I would take one side and multiply it by the other side. So five and three fourths. So I have five three-fourths. Now find the shaded region, the area of the shaded region. Again, I could multiply across, and I could leave my answer that way. Units, that's the point. Or I could move some pieces around and find out how many holes there are and what is left over. So let me do that. So I'm going to take this piece and move it here. So there's one. I'm going to take this piece and move it here. So that's two. And I'm going to take this piece and move it way over here. That's three. And then I have no more pieces that I can move, right? So that's a full one. So then I have to figure out what is this piece left over. So I have three and one, two, three out of four. So 15 over four is the same as three and three-fourths square units. Again, I can prove that by saying four divided or 15 divided by 4, 4 goes into 15 3 times because 4 times 4 is 16 and I have 3 left over. So 3 with 3 left over my fraction there. Awesome job ladies. Let's do this again tomorrow. Remember to like and subscribe if you would like me to continue doing these lessons on video.